It is 7 o'clock in the morning. That's when bakers do the thing. Hi, today we're, we are making the pineapple upside down cake. All right, to start with, we have a 12 inch cake pan with a can of cut pineapples. And you just pop the top, that's the funnest part. And then you do the Marishuana cherries, however you want to say that today. Maraschino. Mmm! You know, while baking this, you know you're going to be eating these little things. But anyway, but two cans of pineapple. Um, it's really easy. You take this, flip it, pop the top, and then you get this effect. Crack, pop, and then you take the pineapples out. Don't, you probably want to eat before you do this so that you're not eating all the ingredients because they're delicious. Okay, moving on to the next step. All right, next step, drain the pineapple juice. Oh yeah. Oh, and there's more. Mm, for those who love pineapple juice and a little acid in their life, this is the good stuff. With a little bit of ice. Mmm. Don't waste anything. Canola oil. Or using canola oil, you spray the pan down so it doesn't stick or burn as bad. That's right. Those who are really good at spray painting, that would have been fun. And then you lay your paper down in the bottom so you get an even pop out after the bake and then you lay your pineapples down in this is the fun part this is like building these precious pineapples will be baked to perfection okay so um, a bit of the artistry here is to cut the pineapples to fit they don't necessarily need to touch the side of the pan, but this is the way we want it for now. Next, butter, cherries, and brown sugar. Prep the cherries. All right, and we're going to put the cherries into the center of the pineapples for effect. This process can be done by using your hands that are clean and prepped. And it's a quick process if you've ever tried to do some art let's just fill in the little pineapple holes and halves this is a really important part of the process to get this right is to have success and then just make sure you drain in the extra cherry juice because it makes it a slippery situation in there and that's it for the cherries Okay, next you're gonna use some dark brown sugar. Has a little bit more molasses taste um, with the dark brown and then the light. So um, we'll move on to that. Before the brown sugar, there must be butter. And butter makes everything better. Okay, so you really wanna take your oven and pre-bake it to 350. Well, preheat, sorry. You know how I say things different. Preheat, pre-bake. Okay, so we have butter, cherries, pineapples, and we're about to have brown sugar. Go ahead. Yay. That should be really good. Look at that technique of a real baker. Check it out. You just sprinkle it throughout the pan. There you go. And you got brown sugar, butter, marishirani cherries, and pineapples. Okay, so we're to the point of uh, adding butter. How much is that, honey? One and a third cups of butter. And then what? what's next? 
Uh, then we add our sugar. Yay! And it's three and a half cups of sugar. And this is a double batch. And this is a double batch, everyone. So we do it big around here. And this is my favorite part. You put the butter and the sugar and you mix it all up. Oh yeah, nothing like bakery destruction. Science at its best. Look how it mixed thoroughly. Okay, next. And then you crack the egg. Check it out. Professional. Why are you separating them into a bowl, Laura? Make sure there's no shells that go into the cake. Aww. You're just perfection. Look at that. And then you add vanilla. Four teaspoons. Look how she does that with precise measurement. Nah, or a little extra. Thanks. You can do this at home too. Look at that, ain't that yummy? And the eggs are in the bowl. And they go into the bowl. Oh yeah, lay them down, baby. You want to let them kind of mix in a little bit, one at a time? That's right. Is that called folding? It's all creamed together. Oh man, look at that. Boom. Boom. Oh, oh. I know, everybody, we're giving everybody anxiety with that last one. Oh yeah. Look at the mixture. And then magic happens and it looks like this. All consistent, beautiful. Let me turn the speed up just a little bit here. Hitting. Oh yeah. Okay, so the next steps are baking soda and baking powder. Baking powder only for this one. Oh, baking powder only, my bad. Five teaspoons for the double batch. Five teaspoons. That's all. Awesome. Look at that. This is science. Yes, it is. Chemistry. That's right. Just for all y'all out there going, man, this video's long. It's about to get interesting. No volcanoes here, though. <laughs> at least we hope not. If we turn our back on the mixer and it blows up everywhere, we know we did it right. Look how that was done. And then two teaspoons of salt. And what type of salt is this, honey? It's pink sea salt that pink I'm using. Pink sea salt that we use. Not particularly, it may have just been on sale. For those home bakers out there who are on a budget. You want to do the honors, honey? Oh yeah, look at that. Look how that paddle just precisely mixes everything up with this KitchenAid 3000. <laughs> okay, here we go. We got the flour. How much flour there, honey? This is three cups of flour. <laughs> three cups. And a cup measure. Right? That's right. And, uh, you know, like our seasoned NFL quarterback, she fumbled, but she recovered quickly. So, yay. Oh, one more, right? One more to go or just three? Just three for right now. And oh. Mix it well. That's right. See, I'm an I'm a all or nothing kind of guy. She's a doop, 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 doop. And then it just, you know, does this thing. Oh yeah, look at how that spins. Majestic. And then we're doing the milk tank. One and a quarter cups of milk. One and a quarter. Oh man, look at that beautifulness. And this is what gives it its gooey cake mix feature. <laughs> cake mix, huh? There we go. It does make it nice and gooey. Yum. And none of this is box cake mix, I was just saying. Ooh. Yeah. So you combine these really well each time you put them in. 
Oh, if you no. do this step, it helps to activate the gluten. Um, that's why you do three cups of flour, a cup and a quarter of milk, and then you repeat and do another three cups of flour, another cup and a quarter of milk. And once that's all mixed together, it makes a beautiful batter. Yes. That's right. Good job. This so, is what it looks like while it's mixing up. Yep, we just added the second three cups of flour. It's getting pretty creamy. So now we'll add the milk. This is the last step for the batter. Put the milk in. Then it will be more like a cake consistency. Cake batter consistency. And for you wondering why this video is so long, because she she pours this stuff in with finesse. <laughs> I'm like, Pow. One of these days we'll have Kenny do it and you'll see. Stream and trickle. So then once you have everything mixed together, you want to run it kind of on a high feeding uh, speed. Yum. Let it all combine really nicely and then your batter will be ready. Okay, like she was saying, you probably just let this go for two minutes. Let it mix really nice. Do the science through there. You carefully clean the mixer paddle and pull it out, get all the creamy goodness off of there. Mm. Yep. Alright, when you get your batter done, um, and like in other videos, you want to make sure that you're scooping stuff out of the bottom. There's probably some extra sugar. Um, milk, all that good stuff in the bottom. So you just make sure you get that all out of there. And look how she folds the batter in there. Pretty awesome. Now we're pouring the batter on top of all the pineapple deliciousness. deliciousness. So you just pour it on there. Don't be scared. Let it go. Let it go. Check it out. I'd sing the wrong the rest of the song for you, but we'd have some copyright issues. So, <laughs> but yeah, you just mainly you just fold the batter in on top of all the ingredients and make sure that it's even and precise. And that's what Laura's all about. Check it out. And that batter looks really good. I mean, it's. It's got a thick consistency, but also a creamy consistency. So you're not necessarily pouring water on top of things, but this is what makes the cake. The cake is just beautiful. And then you just make sure, get it around the edges so it has a good base. And then when you get to the middle, you wanna push down and have it fold into the pineapple, brown sugar, butter, and cherries. That looks great. Good job, Laura. Alright. Alright, now we go to the oven. Go. Alright. Cake is in the oven, preheated to 350. Alright, you want to set it to 40 minutes? Here we go. So, this is the magic that happens with pineapple upside down cake. You have to Go and break the crust off the pan. To have Kenny do this. <laughs> Here's the flip. Oh. And we'll slide it back. Yep. No problem. And make sure it's in the center so push it that way just a little bit. Bam. Right there. And you can move it while you have the pan on. You can't move it while it is done. So are we going to try to lift it off and see what the magic is under there? Is this super oh, I can I can see the uh, the, the butter it? and the okay. yum yum. So, ready? We do this now. Let's just see what we get. And when you're pulling off, you just kind of want to stick it up a little bit. 
can give the pineapple and goo time to drip down. <laughs> wow. Perfect. So and that then, is the end result right there. Since we did the parchment paper, I'm gonna pull that Woo! off. Mama. And that is a pineapple upside down cake. Oh yeah. Look at that steam. Wow. Thing. Now that's a beautiful thing. That that's the way you want it to turn out. No doubt. You happy? I'm happy. Beautiful. Awesome. All right, more to come. So in preparation, we're going to do a caramel sauce, and we're going to clean up the edges here a bit. Um, so, but I'm happy with it. That is beautiful. Beautiful. And that's how it's supposed to turn out. The disaster is all these pineapples and cherries and goo fall out with the pan. That's bad. All right.